It's love and a trace, meaning life did he give Me to my heart does my Savior now live It's love and a trace Aloha everybody, thank you for coming to the channel again this week. It is so good to have you here. We are in Studio One for such a time as this. This is our studio and we just want to rejoice that you're here to listen to the Word of God. And we're so thankful. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And be sure to always hit that like button because it's good for us to see that you like the content that we're talking about. All right, are you ready to get started? I am, and today we're going to be talking about not looking back, looking forward. And I'm going to start in John chapter 21 and verse 3. And just a little background, Jesus has ascended. He has not ascended. He has risen from the dead. He has not ascended. He is still on the earth, and he's visiting the disciples, and he's visiting other people. That's what's going on right now. So in John 21, 3, Simon Peter said to them, who is them? The other people, the other disciples that were with him. I am going fishing. Uh-oh. He's going back to what he used to do. They said to him, we will also come with you. Yeah, sounds like a great idea. Wrong. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Well, we know what happens. Jesus comes, and they catch a whole bunch and all of that. But let's look at Matthew 4, 18 and 19, because this is what Jesus had told them when he was first gathering his disciples together. Verse 18 of Matthew 4. Now, as Jesus was walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Makes sense that they would cast a net into the sea to catch the fish. Actually, in Hawaii, there is net fishing that goes on here, not just deep sea and shoreline. Verse 19. And he said to them, follow me. This is Jesus talking. And I will make you fishers of men. So right there, he was giving them a new assignment. Not to be fishing in the Sea of Galilee, but to be fishing on the earth for humans to come to know Jesus. And that was their assignment right from the beginning. They probably had no clue what he was talking about. Okay, we're going to go to Hebrews 12 and verses 1 and 2. Remember, the context that we're talking in today is don't go back. Verse 1 of Hebrews 12, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. I want to stop there and camp out here for a moment. Now, I'm not saying that the guys were sinning. They obviously weren't because Jesus brought in a whole bunch of fish. He didn't rebuke them when they didn't cast when they didn't catch anything after casting their nets all night. So, but I want you to pay attention to the things that so easily entangle us. And it says, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, not behind us. But before us, we're to look at that race that is set before us. When we're in a race, we don't run backwards because then we lose for sure. We need to keep our eye on the goal. We need to keep our eye on the win. So it says, I'm going to read that sentence again so it makes sense. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. We can't have our eyes fixed on Jesus looking back. Yes, it's good to remember the things that he's done for us, but it's not good for us to move back when we're to move forward with him. And it says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, we're in verse 2 of Hebrews 11, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that's the God, God the Father. The Son sat down at the right hand of God the Father. Isn't that something? Well, 
Jesus moved forward and Jesus is returning for us, but he's not going back. He's coming back to take us with him, which is so awesome. I get excited, especially the state that the world is in right now. We know that we're at the beginning of these birth pangs and we know that Jesus is coming back soon. All right, let's look now at Philippians 13. I'm sorry, there is no Philippians 13. So I hope all of you said, what are you talking about, Terry? Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So again, Paul's saying here, you know, God reminds us throughout the scriptures of, of how he set the Israelis free, of his mercy, of all the wonderful things he has done. We could look back at those things, but we're not to look back in our lives and go back to what we were doing before we knew Jesus, before we had the call of God in our lives, before we were filled with the Holy Ghost and fire so that we could share the gospel with all those God puts in our path forward. All right, let's go now to Luke chapter 9 and verse 57 to 62. So this is going to be a larger piece of scripture. Luke 9, 57, 62 in the New American Standard Bible. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. He wasn't being mean. He was trying to make a point. He was trying to say that what you're called to do when you follow him is to do what he did, and he preached the gospel. He cast out devils. He healed the sick. That's what we're to do. Okay, in verse 60 of chapter 9 of Luke, Jesus said to him, oh, I read that, 61, and another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. The point here, did he want his, his sons and daughters to say goodbye to their moms and pops, that isn't the issue that he's talking about. He's a t talking about looking forward, looking unto him, looking at what we're supposed to be doing, called of God for the kingdom of God and not the kingdom of this earth, which is quickly fading away. Okay, let's. we're still in Luke chapter 9, but we're going to go down to verses 1 and 2. And he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all the demons and to heal diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. See, this is what we're to do. We're to go out. We're to perform healing. We're to lay hands on the sick so that they recover. We're always to be speaking the word of God, changing the conversation so that the focus is on Jesus and his saving grace, his mercy, his love, his care for his created beings. Okay, Matthew 9 and verse 37 and 38. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Why are they few? Because people keep looking back. Because people aren't moving forward. People, we need to go forward with the commands and the calls. You know, sometimes you don't hear from God, and you don't hear from God, and you're praying and praying. You need to go back to that last place. This is a time to go back to where he spoke to you and obey what he said to do, and then you can move on. So if you have that unsettledness within your spirit, 
you go to that place and and I'm not saying physically go I'm saying spiritually sit with Jesus and say what was that last thing you asked me to do and then go you need a starting point and it's not backwards it's forwards so in Matthew 9 and 38 he said therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest are you praying for other believers? Are you praying that others go out? Are you praying in places that you cannot go? If you're like, I live in Captain Cook, Hawaii, and I have opportunity on the Kona Coast while I'm living here to minister to those that live here or those that come and visit here or those that come into the church or those when I'm in the store or any place like that. Every place the Lord gives me opportunity is me going forward to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we're not to go back. Now, does that mean don't witness to somebody you've already witnessed to? That isn't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about following Jesus. We are to follow Jesus. We are to get our marching orders from him every day and see where we're supposed to march to, what the plan of the day is. You may be thinking you're going to one store, but he wants you to go to another store. Now, maybe the price is better at the first store, and you have to pay a dollar more at the second store, but he's got a divine appointment for you. So just listen, just pay attention, and move forward. Okay, now I'm going to read from John chapter 4 and verse 35. Do you not say there are still four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. They're ready, people. They were ready back then over 2,000 years ago. They're certainly ready now as the gospel has spread to most of the earth. It is, it is a requirement as a believer to be a sent one. You know, we have classes here at Kona Faith Center. They're discipleship classes. We call them champion classes because we believe we're champions in Him. And the first class is kind of like Christianity 101. It's, it's, it's a, a foundation class, just so when you come to this church, you will learn what we believe. The second one is the class that you have to take before you become a member, and it's a 12-week class. So it takes 24 weeks if you go to classes without breaking you know, any of the mold or any of the time in between before you can even talk to us about becoming members, because we want to make sure that you know what we believe here at Kona Faith Center and what it means to be a member. A lot of churches don't do this. They sign people up right away. We don't do that. We want people to make sure that this is where God has planted them. So Jesus is saying we need to take care of the business at hand. And the business at hand is for us, once we've made that commitment to Jesus, once we are filled with the Holy Ghost and power to go forth, because the main reason for the baptism in the Holy Spirit, if you go back to Acts 1.8, is to be a witness for the Lord. All right, are we ready to move on? Well, good. John 17.18. He said, as you sent me into the world, he's praying to Abba, which means Daddy in Hebrew. He's praying to the Father God. I also have sent them into the world. We are sent ones. We are sent into the world to declare the gospel. To, Jesus came to example to us, besides going to the cross and paying the price for all sin, once and for all, besides getting beaten to a pulp so that we could be healthy and whole, he came to cast out devils. He came to preach the gospel. That's what he says. He said, for this is why I was sent. And as you're reading through the gospels, you'll see this. All right, let's go to Proverbs 4, starting in verse 25, 25 to 27, Proverbs 4. It says, let your eyes look directly ahead. That's what we're talking about, looking ahead, looking forward, not looking back. And let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. You know, if your head is turned, you can't see what's in front of you. When I turn my head... I can't see the camera, so you're just seeing the side of my face. We have to look ahead. We have to look forward. It's simple, but it doesn't mean it's easy. You need the power of God. You need the power of God. 
So it says, Proverbs 4.25, let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Which way are your feet going? Do not turn to the right. This is my right, probably your left. Nor to the left. Turn your foot from evil. Ha ha. Is it evil to look back? Is it evil to want to go back into what you're not supposed to be doing? Well, unless the Lord tells you, it is. Now, some of you, you will continue your job for all your life. If that's where God has you, if that's your mission field, and besides being sent out into your communities, then, that, then you stay there. That's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying, just go and share the gospel. Just look ahead. Look forward. Don't look back at the sin you committed before you came to Jesus. That's all wiped out. Jesus doesn't remember it. The Bible's very clear. God does not remember our sins. It's cast as deep into the sea as it can go. It's as far from the east to the west. It never meets. He doesn't remember. We're his children. He is full of forgiveness and mercy and love. So I just want to encourage you all. Father, in Jesus' name, I encourage them in you for them to look ahead, to move forward, for them to grab a hold of the call that you've given each and every one of us, Lord. And that could be a behind-the-scenes call or that could be a forward actually going out into the mission field. It doesn't matter. Just that we be obedient and we keep our eyes on you, the lover of our souls, because you created us. And we keep our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name, God bless you, and we will see you next week. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your Spirit could